Yo, what's up? I hope you're all doing super well. Thank you so much for tuning in into this show. Um, this podcast has now been running for quite a while and I'm so happy with the reactions that I get from your side. Uh, I got so many PNs and stuff telling me that this show helped them and that it inspired you. I'm just super grateful for all the love that you've shared. So thank you so, so much. Um, I've realized that a lot of you um, are not yet subscribed to this podcast on Apple and Spotify. So if you're on those platforms, please head over, drop a short follow. It would really mean a lot to me. It would make me real happy. And if you were to leave a written review on there or send me a PN, um, that would really mean the world to me. Seeing how this helps you, seeing how it inspires you. It just, it makes me so, so happy. So thank you so much for all the support and now enjoy the show. Yo, what's good friends? Welcome to another episode of the Empowering You podcast. Today we're going to have another solo episode and I'm going to talk about sleep. Now, sleep is a very important topic that I feel is often underestimated and not talked enough about it. Personally for myself, it was kind of the last real thing that I dialed in into my health and fitness journey. So I was taking well care of my nutrition, I was training a lot, was training re really well, but still like my sleep wasn't really that good. At first um, I wasn't sleeping enough and then relatively quickly I realized that it's kind of important to sleep enough so I started to sleep more. But what I for a very long time didn't take care of was actually the sleep quality. How well do I sleep and how can I influence how well I'm sleeping? And that's the exact part that I feel like doesn't get talked a lot, a lot about it, especially like in a general population. No one cares about it. And even among athletes, like obviously the very high level athletes take well care of it. But um, like the recreational and more hobby athletes, they don't really care about their sleep quality too much. I feel it's not so often talked about. It's getting more of a topic lately, but yeah, I still feel there is a lot to work on, on the, in that regard. So that's what I want to focus today on on, or on today's episode. And um, first, uh, I want to talk a little bit about why sleep is actually so important, then um, what you can do to actually sleep better and improve sleep quality. Um, in that part, I will also share my very own sleep routine and what I'm doing at night to make sure that I'm sleeping better. And then lastly, I want to close it off with some words about supplements that might influence how well you sleep. So yeah, let's dive into it. Uh, first, why is sleep so important? So I think for myself, sleep is probably the most important part of health and fitness, fitness is what I came to realize. Like in CrossFit, we have that pyramid of fitness where nutrition is kind of the base. But yeah, I would argue that sleep is even more below because if we don't sleep well, well, nothing else in our life really works properly. So one thing that you realize for sure is that if you sleep poorly, then um, your productivity the next day is also going to be very poor. You just have a very hard time to concentrate, focus on your work. You get distracted very easily. And even the quality of the work that you do that suffers, you make more mistakes. So obviously for our performance, um, it's very important that we sleep enough. And I'm sure every one of you made experience where sleep wasn't adequate and your performance suffered the next day. And similar, it's also with the performance in the gym, right? You hit the gym, you're tired, you're probably gonna lift less weight, you're gonna be a little bit slower on your med cons, and just you feel less motivation in general to even go to the gym, so maybe you don't even go in the worst case. So yeah, for our performance, obviously it's very bad if you don't sleep well, I think everyone knows that. But there is also more to it, like, when we go back to the example of the gym, like even if you get a good workout because you and you don't sleep well, your progress is gonna suffer because sleep has a big um, impact on your hormone release, on your hormone production. Obviously, you release um, growth hormones and testosterone and many other hormones at night when you sleep. So if you don't sleep enough, you get less of those hormones, you get less gains, um, you're gonna get less progress and also your recovery for the next workout is going to be worse. So in the next workouts, again, you're gonna perform a little bit worse. So yeah, obviously on that front, we also have um, a big impact of sleep. Your progress is going to be much better when you sleep better. Another big problem coming with the lack of sleep is 
um, that your mental health really suffers from it. So um, studies could show that um, lack of sleep contributes to development of depressions, which was certainly the case for me when I had my, all my depression problems or when those started. At that time, I had to start being in, uh, working in the office at 7.15. I had to get up like super early to be there on time. And generally, I tend to be more of a night owl. So that was very much against my natural rhythm. And there was, I was sleeping maybe five to six hours every night during the week. And I was super tired. Like I was so tired that sometimes when I was in classes, I just fell asleep. And um, this obviously, or I think that this also had a big contribution why I started to fall into depressions or probably if I would have slept more, I would have suffered much less or would have been stronger to fight a depression and all that problem. So I think, yeah, sleep plays a very big role for mental health uh, in my own experience, at least that's the case. And then the last thing that we have uh, with sleep is that it's very impactful on your um, immune system. You're just going to be more healthy and you're going to be sick less often if you sleep better. So now with that all being said, it's very, very clear that sleep is super important for our health, for our well-being. Um, it's just very crucial for our lives, right? So what can we do to sleep better? First and foremost, the most important thing that you need to do is obviously making sleep a priority. Um, value, really valuing it so then you make sure that you go to bed early enough we just need at least seven hours of sleep even better is to get eight and for that many of us we just need to value it and decide to go to bed a bit, little bit earlier to get more sleep um, but yeah I said I did that quite quickly but then another big step up is when you start actually to value the sleep quality and to improve the sleep quality um, you need to kind of get into a nighttime routine, get into something at night, some actions that wind you down, that calm you down and that really get you in the right state to fall asleep and sleep well at night. And for that we have a variety of different things that we can do. So um, reading is very good, um, journaling is a good option. Um, hot showers are well to calm you down, then also some mindfulness exercises, some stretching, some breathing, some foam rolling, all that kind of stuff. So those are activities that really calm you down and get you prepared for sleeping. Another hugely important thing is our exposure to light. Um, bright light and especially blue light from TV, computer and mobile phone screens, they prevent the release of melatonin. So melatonin is the hormone that will put us to sleep eventually. Therefore, it's very important that we stimulate its release. And when it's slowly getting dark, then that's the trigger for our body to realize, oh, it's getting night, it's getting time to sleep, and he starts to release all the melatonin. Therefore, at least one hour before you go to bed, you should turn off your TV screens, you should not stare into your phone anymore and dim the lights, make your rooms darker so that you can get into that sleep state. And I know one hour that sounds like a lot and it's very hard to do, like I for myself also struggle with that very hard. Most, most of the time it's more like 30 to 45 minutes in my case, but already that helps a lot, like just Turning off the screens, dimming the lights a while before you go to sleep will make a, deep, a big difference. Ideally, it should be an hour or more. If it's less, well, at least it's something better than nothing, right? So for myself, I just say as much time as possible before I go to sleep, I turn off the screens, I do something different and I dim the lights and then that I feel much more tired if I do that and I sleep better. So that really helps me. Then something else that is really, really helpful to improve your just sleep quality and quantity, I think both of them, um, is to have a good sleep rhythm. So always go to bed at the same time at night um, and then your body will just ingrain that rhythm and you'll automatically get more tired around that time, get into the sleep mode and you'll always start to wake up at the same time in the morning. So usually I just wake up at the time I start working without even uh, an alarm clock because my body is so used to my sleep rhythm and I actually get enough sleep because I value it. And then I don't need the alarm clock anyway, which is super cool to wake up without it. 
and yeah it really really improves the quality and makes sure that you get enough quantity as well so yeah value uh, or value your sleep and get into a rhythm always go to bed at the same time even on weekends will go a will do a big big deal into making your sleep quality and quantity better and then a last problem that i think many of you know is um, when you finally get to bed and you want to sleep and then your head starts racing you have so many thoughts and your brain just can't shut up and consequently you can fall asleep right probably know that problem um, that's because we need some quiet time to reflect on what's actually happening in our life and what matters to us and all the things that are happening around us and we need to give ourselves the quiet time to reflect on that now if you're living a super busy life if your day is super stressful and you don't have any downtime the first time you actually have some quiet time the first time you actually have some downtime is at night when you're in bed then well that's at a time you start to process all those th things that happened and um, when you start to think about everything that happened in your life and to prevent that because that shouldn't happen you should sleep then and you don't want those thoughts you need to take some time to yeah some quiet time to reflect and think to, throughout the day um, for myself I figured that especially journaling helps a lot to get rid of those thoughts and just kind of wind down and shut off my brain but even during the day I try to find some space where I can like think for 10-15 minutes uh, beat after after lunch or whatever whatever time I can find just have some quiet time to think and reflect on stuff that happened will really help you to then at night not have to do that and sleep better at night so yeah besides those quiet times throughout the day that helped me sleeping I also have a sleep routine or a nighttime routine that I follow um, it doesn't look exactly the same every night because obviously I work late as a coach I get home late I eat late and then uh, the, sometimes I don't have enough time to even do the full nighttime routine after my dinner before I go to bed and in those cases I value the sleep quantity more so much rather than spending one hour to do the full nighttime routine and then only sleeping seven and a half hours I sleep eight hours and cut off half of an hour of my sleep routine so I, I still think that quantity of sleep is more important than quality but with that being said my excuse for not doing the full routine it can't be that I was hanging around on YouTube watching videos or playing on my PlayStation so those are not excuses I only cut off of my nighttime routine if it is for the fact that I just got home from work too late um, and the way that actually looks like is one hour before I go to bed I turn off the screens I dim the lights and then I start reading a bit um, and after the reading I'll write my journal and then I'll um, do some foam rolling some stretching and some breathing exercises before I finally head to bed um, now if my time's limited the first thing that I'm cutting off is the reading because I read every morning anyway so I got my reading time already in it's kind of a bonus if I get to do it at night if I have even less time then um, I cut off the foam rolling but especially the journaling and the screens and the dimmed lights I always do those those are very important to me because I feel those make the biggest difference um, but yeah how your night time is gonna look like might be very different different routines work for different people um, your life's different so I gave you a lot of possible things to do earlier in this episode and just pick a few out, try them out, see what works the best for you, see what makes you feel good and what makes you actually sleep well and then just stick to those that work for you. And then the last point that I want to talk a little bit about it are supplements. Um, the most prevalent sleep supplement that we hear about is melatonin. I tried that one out for myself actually, I took it for one month every day and in the beginning it was fucking amazing I slept super well but then it quickly lost the efficiency and it started to be pretty ineffective in the end even and I think that's because it's a hormone so your body will just adjust the release if you're always taking it exogenously um, 
but melatonin can still be a good supplement if you're like traveling a lot for example and you have to fight off jet lag or if you're working in shifts and your shifts differ then uh, melatonin can be very good to make yourself tired at times you usually wouldn't be tired so it's a great supplement to adjust to a different time zone to a different rhythm yeah to a different sleep rhythm in general just there it can be very helpful you're gonna get tired you take it for three days and then after those three days you kind of stop using it because your body already adjusted to the new sleep rhythm and then you stick on with that then a supplement that I personally take that really helps me um, is magnesium. So magnesium in general is a good supplement to take because it is involved in so many important processes in the body and a lot of people are slightly deficient in it. So again, I think it's a good supplement to take. But on top of that research also suggests that it um, improves sleep quality quite a bit. And it does so by encouraging relaxation and stress reduction. And yeah, since I started taking magnesium, I feel quite a difference. I actually feel more re relaxed when I wake up in the morning. So I definitely think my sleep quality has gotten better. And another thing that I have realized is that I just got crazy dreams since I started taking it. Um, yeah, my dreams are so much more wild. And there is not so much science yet on the effect of magnesium on dreams. But there are a lot of people that report the same, that just say that, yeah, since I started taking magnesium, I got crazier, wilder dreams, uh, which is actually a super cool thing, if you ask me. So, yeah, that's another additional benefit to it. And, yeah, then that's it for today. That's all my takes on sleep and how to make it better. Um, I definitely want to say that for me, not only valuing sleep more in terms of time, but really making an effort to get better sleep quality makes quite a big difference and I feel a lot better. And also when I, for example, on holiday and I don't take care of my sleep as much, I fall off of my rhythm, then I just feel so much more tired. I really, really feel a difference as soon as I'm like stopping to taking care of my sleep. And yeah, a lot of people you actually don't realize how much more energetic and how much better you could feel if you would value your sleep more and make a bigger effort on it. So with that being said, just really value sleep, prioritize it, make an effort to improve sleep quality and most of all make sure that you sleep those seven to eight hours and you'll feel so much better. You'll perform better in the gym, at work, wherever you are. Um, your well-being will be so much better. You'll feel happier and just more, yeah, relaxed and energetic and vivid in general. So, yeah, definitely worth the investment, definitely worth doing. And I hope this episode helped and talk to you soon, soon again. Peace out. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed the show, make sure to follow the channel to stay tuned with all the future episodes. And, you know, the people that leave a written review or send me a text message you really mean the world to me it gets me so pumped up to hear how these shows helped you how they inspired you how they helped you to get better it means so so much to me so thank you for that and also make sure to follow my social channels at pt.lucas on instagram and at pt.lucas on tiktok talk to you soon in the next show peace out <laughs>